Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you receive this message. This is Zion Reform, United Church of Christ's online message for July 2nd, 2023. We welcome you to join us in our sanctuary during the summer. We have services now at 9 p.m., so 9 p.m. in the sanctuary if you can make it. With that, let us get started with our call to worship. O oh, sing to God a song of joy, for we have been greeted by our God. O oh, dance to God a waltz of welcome, for we have been embraced by our God. O oh, create a God a portrait of hope, for we have been inspired by our God. And the word of the Lord comes to us from Matthew 10, starting with the 40th verse. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Welcome whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will have and receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of the little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, open us up so that we may come to love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our soul, with all our strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. How many of you grew up being a hell raiser? I was a little bit of a hell raiser. Maybe you got in trouble and later on you straightened yourself out. Have you ever been to hell? That's the question. Yeah, today I'm going to talk about hell. 1983, I was in the middle of a prison riot, and I thought that I was in hell. But many people walk into prisons each and every day, and they minister to prisoners each and every day, and do wonderful, wonderful things in ministry. In 2020, with COVID raging at the nursing home I cared for, one-third of its residents would come to succumb to death, and I went in to offer their final prayers. It felt like I was walking into hell, a very, very sad place. But the staff and the workers of that home walked into that home each and every day, regardless of their own safety, to do a great deal of ministry for those residents. In January of 2021, Patty had a stroke, and we both felt like we'd entered hell. But every day, people that have strokes reach out and talk and, and be part of support groups that offer help to others that have had strokes and others in need. William Booth discovered one night he couldn't sleep. He tossed and he turned, and he decided to get up and to go for a walk. He journeyed to a part of London that he had never walked through before, the poor section of London. He spent the rest of his night seeing sights and smelling odors that he had never experienced. When he rode, arrived home in the early hours of the morning, his wife Catherine was almost frantic. Where in the world have you been, she cried out. He replied, Catherine, I've been to hell. I've been to hell. He then told her what he'd seen, and together they founded the Salvation Army. Have you been to hell? Been to hell and back, as the old expression goes? Is there anyone who has not been to hell and back in their personal life? What I'm asking you is, have you been to another kind of hell, maybe a social kind of hell, or an economic kind of hell, a Democrat? graphic kind of hell, or maybe a physical type of hell. You say you've never been to hell? My answer, question for you then would be, why not? As a Christian, why not? Why haven't you been to hell? Why aren't you called? We aren't called to live in hell, no. We're called to live in heaven. But as Dante found out, you can't get to heaven oftentimes without going through hell. For a short time at least. The world's on fire. Think about it. Our world is a world full of strife, a world that's unredeemed, a world that's God's worst nightmare, and a world to which God can no longer speak those words that he spoke in Genesis many long ago. Those words that say, and God saw that it was good. I wonder what God says when he looks at the world today. Russians are fighting Ukrainians. Yemen, the government, is fighting the rebels. Iran, the protesters are being killed for rebelling against the government. The actual number of wars, armed conflicts killing at least a thousand members, 
has increased steadily since World War II, but the fighting is less between nations and far more between ethnic groups and religious groups in civil wars. Internal collapses. There were at least, at least I say, 10 civil wars going on and taking place in 2023. When I was trying to find this, there was more than I could count, but they said, look at these prominent 10. What do we do about the mess that we've done? The mess that we've made of God's creation? How do we handle it? Why is the church so late on hate? How do we work on God's fight against evil to make the world a place that God can once again look at and say, I saw it and it was good. I saw it and it was good. When Jesus wanted to ask it, when wanted to ask his disciples, who do the people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? He took them to a place. He took them to Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, the capital city. And it was famous for several things. It was famous for one, it was celebrated for its natural beauty because it is where the Jordan started and it had beautiful, beautiful, flourishing flowers and things there. So it's natural beauty. Second, it was built in the sanctuary of the god Pan, the god of nature. And third, a, a cave there known as the Cave of Pan, or the Cave of Hades, was there. This is where Josiah wrote about the cave. This is what Josiah wrote about the Cave of Pan. He said, hard by the foundations of the Jordan, there atop a mountain raised in immense height, and beside and beneath, or at its bottom, was a dark cave that opens, which is a horrible precipice that descends abruptly into the vast deep. It contains a mighty quantity of water, which is immovable, and when anybody lets anything down to measure the depth of the earth, of the water, beneath the water, no length of cord is sufficient to reach, reach it. Archaeologist and dean of the Jerusalem Center of Biblical Study, Charles Page, reveals that this cave was known collaterally as the entrance to the underworld or the gates of Hades. So in other words, now was it really the gates of Hades? No, I don't think so. But in other words, Jesus took his disciples to the gates of hell to ask him if they really understood who he was. Who was he? He had his disciples stand in front of the gates to the underworld in the midst of pagan headquarters, probably the worst possible place they could be where they worshiped the God of Pan to found his church, found his church and to give them the keys to the church. He takes them to this type of place. One of the greatest athletes in the 19th century was a cricketer, and I'm sure you're all up on your cricket, but his name was C.T. Studd. And he decided to give up his athletic career and his inherited fortune to spend his time in the mission fields. To his friends and family who could not understand why he gave it up, the world, so to speak, for a life of the mission fields of India and China and Africa, he wrote this little piece of published word. Some wish to live within the sound of the church or steep chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell, within a yard of hell. Jesus takes us like he finds us, but he doesn't leave us like he finds us, he changes us. Jesus finds us as hell raisers and turns us as Christians into hell busters, people who won't let the world get away with abuse, will deny the respect of certain people in the world. They will be the one to bust it up. Are you ready to be a hell buster for God? How do you know if you're a hellbuster for God? That's the real question. Hellbusters exude the spirit. When you meet them, they give off a Christ-like spirit. Peace and harmony and caring and love. When you're in their presence, you can almost smell holiness. But that holiness is singed with a little bit of smoke. A little bit of smoke because they've been close to that burning fire of flesh and souls but they've walked through it. So the question really today is, where are you getting singed? Where are you suffering for righteousness sake? The Bible says, therefore let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to the faithful creator 
in doing what is right. Doing what is right. Where are you getting singed? If you live as a Christian, you're going to suffer. That's the, the reality of it all. When you live with integrity, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer when you live with honesty. You're going to suffer when you do anything for justice. Indeed, you will suffer. So I ask you this morning, what pain pierces your life right now because you bear the name Christian? Because you dare to be a hellbuster and go to hell? And I say to you today, go to hell and show your compassion. Go to hell and share your love. Go to hell and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go to hell and you will truly be blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we live in a world racked with violence and hatred, and we are called to be the loving presence for all those around us. We are called to reach out in Christ's love and compassion to all the world. Guide us, Lord, and direct us. Be with those that are lost and lonely, and let us be vehicles to help them. Let us be agents of Christ. We pray this, Lord, as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please bow your heads and receive a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he guide you out into the world with love and compassion for all. And may this day you feel the peace, the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord.